this is one of the best movies I have seen in such a long time. Mm. And one thing I love about it is how the humanity of all the characters is really highlighted. These are imperfect people who the Lord is using. So why is this so important to really highlight in the movie? Well, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> well, the thing is, like, if there's no sin, there's no need for forgiveness. Yeah. So I think the importance of not shying away from, you know, the sin of humanity uh, leans into the desire, the need for grace. And mm -hmm. I think that's kind of the heart of the film. Yeah. Um, yeah, and, I, and, and to piggyback on that, I, I think that it's, the story is proof that God can use the, the most broken people, the, the people who have all kinds of wounds um, to affect other people's lives, to affect great change within the culture, to bring people closer to himself. Um, and so that for me, especially with, with my own character, I saw that as like a major, major thrust of, yeah. of what he was there to do. Well, you can't leave this movie unchanged. I mean, I watched it and I just left so impacted. I was crying. Jonathan, I want to start with you. How was your spiritual walk impacted while really getting into the character of Lonnie and researching this incredible revival that took place? I think for me, it, it just made me more aware of the, the charism of the Holy Spirit. So Lonnie was very connected to the Holy Spirit and the gifts that he was given. He could heal people from all sorts of diseases and, and ailments and things like that and, and, and just kind of be able to read a person's spirit and um, to me, like uh, having that kind of charism and studying this movement and, and studying the, the kinds of um, the congregations that really uh, put this, uh, this priority on, on the fact that like everyone has p this potential to have this within them as, as you know, as a Christian um, mm. and, and call to witness to it. And uh, so, so it wasn't anything that I had known about previously. I wasn't aware of the movement until I got the script and started studying it and thought, wow, this is, this is hugely impactful. So it got me more curious about this kind of um, testimony, this kind of expression of faith. What similarities are you seeing between culture now and the culture in the 1960s and 70s? Because there's a lot of hand-wringing about Gen Z, about young people, mm. but there was then too. Um, why can we be encouraged even though culture seems really dark? <laughs> Well, speaking of Gen Z, uh, <laughs> and then and the base are Gen Z. <laughs> <laughs> I never know what is the border. What is the cap? I think it's ninety-seven. Like, yeah, ninety-seven. My thought is that you know, division has been part of our world's history forever, and I have little sisters who I worry about. But then I remember I found my way, and I think this movie and watching these young people find their way can be really inspiring that having faith and a belief in something bigger than yourself can be a reminder that you're not alone in those years when you feel the most alone when you're young. And um, I hope young people that see the movie have that takeaway. And um, yeah, and the, and the relationship between Greg and Kathy, even when they were young, sort of that respect of each other and you see a lot of sort of toxicity in young relationships now, and so I hope that that's an inspiration to yeah. young men who see the movie, um, the respect that he showed, and to her family and to her. I hope that that's the effect that the movie has on young people. Now, Joel, I want to ask you this, because we talked about revival last night, mm -hmm. and I thought it was so timely. There are revivals going on across the country right now in colleges, just in God's working in amazing ways. Is this a coincidence that the movie is coming out at the same time as all these revivals? I think all things happen in the Lord's timing. So to say, like, if a revival were to spark, it would take uh, division, kind of like a lost, you know, that split culture, mm -hmm. and then um, the revival coming in and like healing and like sweeping across the whole nation. So I think we're primed for a revival. Mm -hmm. um, I think that the timing is very apt. Mm -hmm. um, Le like leaning into that. Um, personally, I hope it happens. Yeah. Um, and uh, Lord willing, it does. Yeah. Well, all three of you are just so bold in, in talking about this movie, talking about your faith. Jonathan, what encouragement would you give to young people to stay bold in their faith when it's countercultural to do so? I mean, we see that throughout the movie. 
I think um, at the end of the day, your, your life only gets better when you put God at the center of it. Um, I think the culture or the society would try to have young people especially believe otherwise for, for all sorts of reasons. But um, I think finding examples of faith and inspiration in their lives uh, and then modeling themselves after like a life, like a life uh, you know, akin to a disciple of Christ is, is something that it's only going to improve their life. Mm -hmm. when, I, when I personally surrendered my own ego and, and the things that I thought were important in my life, when I let go of those things, and I really just let God kind of come front and center, uh, everything changed for me. I mean, my, my career changed, my life changed, my, the things that were important to me changed only for the better. Everything's only gotten better. I haven't been spared of, of struggle and trial and, and you know, suffering like anyone else. That's just part of the human condition. But, but now I, I have a sense of trust that I didn't have before, mm -hmm. uh, just implicit trust that it's going to be okay, and, and it, inevitably it always is. And that's, that's what you get from, from making God the center of your life. Do you guys have anything to add to that? Because you guys are both just, I mean, so many young people are going to be looking up to you guys in this movie. What encouragement do you have for them? Um, I mean, that was just so beautifully, we like, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> chills. Uh, I think, I think Jonathan's right. Once you put, you know, Christ at the center of your life, um, there's a, there's a hope and there's a faith. Um, and like you, your life becomes supported by something larger than um, any problem, you know? Mm -hmm. And there are outcomes and circumstances and like consequences to issues that are going on in your life, but with a faith in God, uh, it surpasses all of that. Mm -hmm. And um, it's kind of like, um, it's like a cornerstone in your life. No, you stand fast on it and hold to it. Yeah, it's really good. And those sayings, everything happens for a reason, God has a plan, those sort of become affirmations mm -hmm. in a way when mm -hmm. you can remind yourself that you're being guided and you're being protected and you're loved and there's something bigger than you that's taking care of you, mm -hmm. no matter what, even if you have those trials and hard times. Yeah.